With that down, let's move on to our fourth and final main topic today. And our fourth and final main topic today gets submitted to us by Amin Safir, who writes, Hello, John. I have a very deep love. Oh, don't we all? I have a very deep love of... Oh, sorry, sorry, my screen went blank for a second. Hold on one second there. There it is. I have a very deep love of comic book movies. DC movies, Marvel movies, it doesn't matter. I feel like the end of Endgame marked the end of a certain era of comic book movies and that a new one is ready to start. It feels like a clean slate. I was wondering, even though I know you love both, Do you think Marvel or DC is better positioned right now to really succeed in the next era of comic book films? Thanks for all you do. All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in, man. I appreciate that. And yeah, you know what? You're not alone, man. I think it is fair to say that Endgame, you know, Rob, we talked a lot about the fact that Endgame clearly did mark the end of a certain era for the MCU. But I think in a grander scheme, you can kind of step back and I think Min is right. I think it does also kind of symbolically mark the end of a certain era. We had this incredible era of comic book films that kind of started the resurgence of the genre with X-Men. And then all the way up to then the, the, the formation of the MCU, DC stuff getting going, and then this big culmination coming up with Endgame being the number one box office film of all time. And it does kind of feel like that was the closing of a certain chapter. And it feels like we're entering into a brand new chapter. What follows up this golden era of comic book films that we've had? And it it brings up a question about, okay, Rob, I, I don't think it's very controversial to say it's not a competition both want to succeed on their own rights and both both enjoy the benefits of when the other has success. Kevin Feige's talked about that. But, you know, it does kind of raise the question for us as fans, and Amin, I think, worded it really well, who's kind of in a good position right now between DC and Marvel? And I, I think if you were to look at it in competitive terms, which we shouldn't, admittedly, but we're fans, so it's what we do. I don't think it's a big stretch, and I even think a lot of very, very diehard DC fans will admit that, hey, round one, that goes to Marvel. (laughs) If you want to look at the previous era, in the three main measurements, right, audiences' reactions were better with Marvel films, the critic reactions were better with Marvel films, and the box office results were better with Marvel films. Okay, I very much like the Marvel like the Marvel films. I very much like the DC films. But yeah, if you had to say one had the competitive advantage over the other, I think it's pretty clear to say, yeah, and it's not very controversial to say Marvel took that. I think Marvel took that. But it could be a different situation, though, when you're talking about where who is better positioned right now. <clears throat> and I'm going to say something that maybe a lot of people might find surprising. I actually really like the position that DC is in right now. I really do. And I would so go so far as to say, I kind of prefer the position that DC is in right now as opposed to Marvel. I'm not saying Marvel's in a bad spot. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying DC is great now and Marvel suck. I'm not saying that at all. But think of it. Let me give you a quick little sports analogy because you guys know I love my sports analogies. Think of it in this terms. Right now in our history, the L.A. Lakers are clearly a better team than the Chicago Bulls. Just right now, they they just are. But let's say this week, the Bulls are on like a five-game win streak. They've got a new rookie. They got a new free agent they just signed that's coming in this week as well to bolster the team. And this rookie who's been injured, he's coming back off the IR. And they're on this wing street. And things look really good for them right now. Meanwhile, the Los Angeles Lakers, who might be the better team overall, they are 3-3 and in their last six games. LeBron James, it looks like he's suffering a worsening back injury, which isn't looking too good. Anthony Davis is out with the flu. And the coach just resigned. Okay, maybe the Lakers are still the better team, but you kind of like the position that the Bulls are in right now. That's how I kind of feel with um, with Marvel and DC. Let me tell you why 
I kind of like where DC is right now, even more than I like the positions Marvel Marvel's in. And then we can have this discussion about what you guys think. But here's here's kind of my thoughts on this. The main thing for me is the idea of uh, momentum. I think momentum's a real thing in movies. I really do. I, I feel like momentum's a big thing. And you look at where is DC right now? Well, what are they coming off of? They're coming off of Aquaman, which was the DCU's first billion dollar film. They're coming off of Shazam, which wasn't a huge box office hit, but the critics and the audiences loved it, right? I'm going to put an asterisk beside this one. Harley Quinn. Now, granted, granted, I did not like Harley Quinn. All right, just to be clear, it's the first DCEU movie that I didn't like. I, I thought it was a pretty poor movie, but I'm still listing this under momentum because the reality is, even though I didn't like it, it got a very respectable 78% critic rating and a verified audience rating of 78% as well. So, hey, it's not a movie for me, but... I still put it under the positive momentum era because a lot of other people did like it. But then you follow that up with Joker. Oscars! Okay? So if you want to talk about momentum, they've got some incredible momentum rolling with them right now. And beyond that, let's look at what's upcoming. We've got Wonder Woman 84. Okay, Wonder Woman is one of their holy trinity, one of their main iconic characters Coming off a really successful Patty Jenkins original Wonder Woman movie. Now coming in, Patty Jenkins is back. We've got that coming out. That's great momentum. Want to talk about major momentum? Oh, you got to talk about Batman. Like whatever has happened before, Batman is the biggest superhero in the world. And now we've got Robert Pattinson playing it. We've got Matt Reeves, you know, one of the great directors going right now. A lot of excitement about Batman. So you've got a big, so you got one of the Trinity and Wonder Woman coming. You got Batman coming. And then, oh, look at this. Black Adam may not be the biggest name in the world, but you know who is the biggest name in the world? The Rock. The, the biggest movie star in the world. And I think that's safe to say, right? He's the biggest movie star in the world. Whether you think he deserves to be or not, that's another discussion. But Dwayne The Rock Johnson is the biggest movie star in the world right now. And certainly the most bankable. So we've got that coming. Oh, and by the way, we got Shazam 2 coming, right? Again, the first one didn't do huge box office, but the critics loved it. The audiences loved it. And I think that's going to show momentum moving in. They just have a lot of momentum right now. And so when you look at DC and where they're at at this moment... Coming off of all this positive momentum, the first time since the DCU launched with Man of Steel that they've had significant, real, positive momentum going. On top of that, what they have coming out is highly anticipated uh, with some of their biggest names. And the one that doesn't have, isn't a big name character, has the biggest name in movies at all with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I just think they're in a very, very good position right now. Now... Let's juxtapose that against Marvel at the moment, okay? Right now, we are in a post-endgame world, right? End end game. We're in a post-endgame world right now. That whole thing, and Rob, you and I have discussed before about how, listen, we're all still very excited about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Of course we are. But, and we've talked about this several times, with Endgame being done you could feel like we're in the post climax, like we're the crescendo is hit and we're kind of on, on that not downward slide, not, not at all, but it's, it's like we're in that area now where we're sitting down. We've just been sprinting with Marvel and, and now we're, we're kind of sitting down. So we are in a post end game world where they're going to have a little bit of work to get that momentum going again. But this one is huge. They, they just lost their two biggest characters, right? They just lost their two biggest characters in uh, Iron Man and Cap. I mean, that's a real thing. The two biggest characters they've had in, with, and, and the actors playing them with Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans, who have been the faces of the MCU to the point that when you did Civil War, boom, 
Your main guys in Infinity War is one, and your main guy in Endgame is the other. It's Cap and Iron Man. This whole thing has kind of been... Look, they have lots of strengths all around. It's not just Cap, and it's not just Iron Man. But there's no arguing they were your two biggest pieces. Your two most popular pieces and your two most fan-favorite pieces were Iron Man and Cap. And now not only are we in a post-Endgame world, we're now in an MCU that for the first time since its inception does not have those two characters. I think that's significant. It's not, it's not a death sentence. I'm just saying it's significant. But also, let's look at what they have coming up, right? They have Black Widow. And listen, I like the trailers for Black Widow. But, you know, I, I if you're somebody like me, I've always said this for a long time. I love Hawkeye and Black Widow. I love those characters. And I love them. I want to see Hawkeye and Black Widow pop up in every MCU movie. But... I've never been interested in a standalone Black uh, a Hawkeye adventure or a standalone Black Widow. There are others, there are many who disagree with me, and that's cool. But the latest trailers for Black Widow were really good, but I, I, I've not sensed this massive excitement about either the Hawkeye Disney Plus series, and I haven't sensed that massive excitement about a Black Widow movie either. There is enthusiasm. The trailers have been have been very good, particularly the later trailers. But I don't think that's as significant as, say, a Hallmark character like a Wonder Woman coming back to the screen. And Black Widow could very well be a billion-dollar film. I'm just saying, but beyond that, you've also got The Eternals coming out, which a number of people are very excited about, but it is one of those properties that a lot of people don't know anything about those characters, right? A lot of people don't know anything about Eternals. Not a lot of people knew about Guardians of the Galaxy either, and look how that turned out. But I'm just saying, right now, when you're looking at the upcoming schedule of the biggest characters, Wonder Woman, Batman, you got the world's biggest movie star in, in The Walk coming with Black Adam and such, and now we've got a couple of not guaranteed home runs with, with Black Widow and Eternals. They could end up being the best films of the year. We don't know. I'm just saying in terms of, of that. But when you look at Marvel's situation right now, we're in the post-Endgame world. They've got some restart. In sports terms, we call those rebuilding years. A team has just won three championships in a row, but now all the contracts have expired and they've got to rebuild the team now. I feel like Marvel's in a little bit of a rebuilding stage right now where they're rebuilding their momentum. They just lost their two marquee characters and they don't have the biggest titles coming out in the immediate future. That doesn't mean they can't crush it. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying when you look at the two, I think there's some pretty good stuff to look at. I do want to say one other thing, though, about, in case you're thinking I'm being too DC fanboyish here. I want to do mention I there are still a couple of legitimate concerns about DC and where they're at right now. There are still a couple of concerns. And the first one I'm going to say is they rarely stick to the plan. DC has a history of having all these big plans and all these announcements. Rob, you remember, because uh, I remember I was on Movie Talk when this, you know, the the head of Warner Brothers had this big shareholders call where they announced, we're doing this cyborg movie and we're doing this Green Lantern movie and we're doing this and this and this and this and this and this. And within 12 months, 90% of those projects were dead and gone. They do. They they were doing Justice League one, and they were already planning Justice League two. Well, where's that? You know, DC does have a history of not sticking to the plan. Okay, so so that is a concern right now. I'm not going to say it's not. The other thing is this: instability in leadership. In the last little while, because you look at something like Marvel, they've had Bob Iger as the chairman of that thing forever now you've had alan horn as the head of their movie division forever and you've had kevin feige captaining the ship of the good uss mcu and that has been the case for over 10 years in the fact in the mcu doing but what's gone on over at warner brothers we've had ceo and chairman and presidents of certain divisions totally doing a, a swap over we had one dude kind of looking overlooking the dcu and then kind of jeff johns and there was there's kind of a triumphant with jeff johns a couple i guess now these guys are running the dcu and then they moved into something else and right now they're in a pretty good spot with walter hamada who's doing a pretty damn good job there but but that hasn't been a long-term thing there's been some inconsistency with leadership there i, I think there's Thing. The other big thing is no um, uh, guiding vision. 
There's been no guiding vision. Like you look at, I'm not trying to compare everything to Marvel, but when you look at Marvel, they've had Kevin Feige. He's had a singular guiding vision. And that has kind of been something that has been missing. And that leads into the last concern I have, which is just overall, overall inconsistency. <clears throat> and I think, Rob, where that inconsistency comes from is the fact that Warner Brothers boasts, yeah, we let each director kind of decide what they want their own movie to be. Well, that sounds good, but the problem is without one person with one vision kind of having final say over everything, you're going to get some movies that are good and you're going to get some movies that are terrible and it's constantly going to do this. Whereas Marvel have had better films and less great films, but there's been a general consistency in the quality of the Marvel films overall. Whereas you can get, you know, Harley Quinn and you can get Joker, you know? And so it's kind of like that. So I still really like the position, Rob, that we see DC in right now, as opposed to Marvel. If I had to pick which one do I think is kind of in the better position right at this moment, I got to say, I really like DC's position, even though I still have a little bit of concerns. That's not to say Marvel's not going to do great. Hell, it's not to say Marvel may not blow DC out of the water in the coming year or two. But I really do like where DC is right now and the way they've positioned themselves. I think they've been doing some really good things lately. Anyway, Rob, I've set all that up. <laughs> when you're looking at... DC and Marvel right now moving forward. Not who's the best overall, not who is, but, but who do you like the way they're positioned right now? How do you see things? Well, first of all, I, I, I should say that I, I, I have loved the MCU and I think that they've done a phenomenal job. And I, uh, the infinity war and end game watched together are wildly, amazingly entertaining triumphs of fantasy filmmaking. But that said, what DC has done, if you look at let let's just take Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and Joker as three, and you could take Harley Quinn, which I really like you, not a fan of, but still, these movies are very interesting, sort of unfettered at having being part of a group. You know, they're they're not the Joker takes place in a different universe than Wonder Woman, and uh, while. Uh, Aquaman has tenuous connections to the to a larger cinematic universe. <laughs> Aquaman is a bonkers movie unto itself. And as somebody who who is an avid movie goer and loves fantasy cinema, I like the fact that we're getting very different flavors of movies from DC. And I can get excited about these films not as being part of a cinematic universe, but as standalone movies that are going to show me stuff I've never seen before. Like the the internecine battle of the Atlanteans and uh, and Aquaman, that was some crazy stuff. Now, that's that's one thing, and 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 I I think that's great. So what I have come to love about DC now is you just never know what you're going to get. Shazam feels different <laughs> from Wonder Woman, feels different from Joker, feels different from Aquaman, and feels different from Harley Quinn. And you go to the movies and you're like, every one of these films is going to be a different experience. And it's going to take you places where, like, dude, when we saw Joker together sitting in that theater, I was like, I can't believe they got away with an R-rated movie about the Joker that's like this. Yeah. I was like, wow. But with the MCU, I know that I'm getting part of it. Uh, I'm getting another part of the quilt or a larger bit of the tapestry that I already understand. And I think, like you, the Marvel Cinematic Universe peaked. You know, it, it, it ended its season or it ended its decade. And the question now is, what are you going to show me that is going to keep my interest, but it's going to be significantly different than what I've seen before? Because DC is doing it with every other movie or every movie, but Marvel now has to do it with the next 23 movies. So what are you going to show me? Now, I have to say, I am really excited for Eternals. Only because, one, I'd like the source material, but I think Eternals, hopefully, is going to chart a new direction. I've heard that it, we're going to see it span a thousand years or something. More of a Lord of the Rings vibe. I have no idea. But I know that the the Eternals, the Deviants, the, the what they're delving into can be much more of the way Aquaman was really wacky and goofy. I'm not saying Eternals will be wacky and goofy, but Eternals could be far more operatic and much different than what we've seen before in the MCU. 
So I'm thinking that's what they're going to have to do. I mean, Black Widow to me looks, again, like the final postscript to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's a prequel, obviously. So it, I, I fully expect that it's going to fit within the 23 movies of what we've seen before. But I see Eternals as the jumping off point for whatever it is that we're going to get next. And and when I hear they're making Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, I'm like, well, that sounds pretty different too. So I think the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I expect it to spin off into crazy new directions. But if it doesn't, I have to say, hearing about a Flashpoint movie that might have Michael Keaton as Batman, that's what I loved about DC Comics reading them as a kid. And if they're going to embrace the wackiness or at least the diversity of the kinds of movies that they can make under the DC brand, which is what they have done with Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Shazam, Harley Quinn, and especially Joker, I have to say, like you – from a cinematic experience standpoint and the fact that you don't know what you're going to get, I think DC is in a better position to, let's call it, thrill moviegoers or surprise moviegoers, which is what we all want. Whereas the MCU, uh, you've got 23 movies already. we got 24 with Black Widow and 25 with The Eternals. That's a lot of movies. And we've, we're used to what we're getting. It's a formula now. It is a pattern, and it is something that we already can anticipate. Whereas DC, when I sit in a, uh, uh, when I put my butt in a seat to see a DC movie, I don't know what the hell I'm going to see, hmm. and that's exciting. Uh, so exciting, sometimes wor worrisome. But I I'll say one other thing that I forgot to mention about something that I really like about DC's position right now over Marvel's. DC does not have a slavish commitment to cinematic universe, you know? And I think that's, I, I there are some, because I remember when they first announced Joker, it's like, well, wait, well, wait a minute. It's not going to have Batman. What? Like, how does this tie in? It's a, but, but, you know, we saw there was a Joker in the, uh, they went outside of cinematic universe. And, and there were some people who were like, well, if it's not in the cinematic universe, what's the point? The point is you can make some great standalone movies without having your hands tied. Academy to what's Award been going winning on. movies. Yeah, <laughs> Academy Award winning movies. And not that I think that every every other movie has to be outside of cinematic universe, but I just love the fact that DC has shown that, hey, we're willing to go outside of the bubble creatively and do something that's a great standalone movie. And right now, we haven't seen Marvel be willing to do that. Like, give us a movie about one of the great characters that has nothing to do with the MCU. Just make them a unique character in their world and, you know, go for it. But I, I kind of like that DC's doing that. Uh, again, it does leave you in a position where you walk in, look, you walk into a Marvel movie, you're pretty damn sure you're going to have a good time. You walk into a DC movie, you might have your mind blown or you might go, what the hell were they doing? You know, it, it right. could be one of the two, but, but you're right. It makes it exciting. Because you never know what you're going to get. So that's a good point. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, look, I think we all love the MCU. And and for the most part, even movies that – you go back and you watch movies that weren't as well uh, received, such as Iron Man 2 or Thor The Dark World, they're still pretty good. You know, you go back and look at them now. They're not like train wrecks. They're still entertaining. They're still interesting. They still add to the tapestry of what the Marvel Cinematic Universe is. And I think it's okay. I think the fact that they've built the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I am still interested. Uh, they've cast these movies well. Black Widow looks to have, I mean, Frances Pugh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of hers. And I, I think that the Marvel Cinematic Universe continues to deliver great entertainment. Great entertainment. And I think that the DC Universe is delivering great entertainment because they've stopped trying to compete with Marvel. And so we're going to get two great tastes that are different from each other. <laughs> <laughs> that's I think that's good. Yeah, I, I think for the first time, Rob, we are in a position right now where we've got, wow, Marvel's on a roll and DC's on a roll. And the winner, once theaters are open, is us. Yeah. <laughs> once the theaters are open, whenever that's gonna be. And the then winner also remember what well, we haven't we haven't mentioned that Marvel is delving into these limited TV shows. Yep, which so we're gives them a whole new dimension. We're going to get WandaVision, we're getting uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, we're getting Moon Knight, we're getting She-Hulk, we're getting all of these things, Loki, you Marvel. know, and, and, 
And that's something else we've never seen before. So how is that all going to work? And I think that's really exciting, too. In an ideal world, Rob, you got two different companies that are forcing each other to innovate uh, and keep moving. And, and again, the winner is us. Question is for you guys. And I, I know it can be a controversial question, but I think if you acknowledge it, hey, we just all love comic book movies. Doesn't matter which corporate title is on it. But which one do you kind of think might be positioned right now? Maybe you can think of a bunch of points that Rob and I didn't bring up and maybe we didn't think about. Maybe you totally agree with us. I actually want, wanted to make that the topic of today's question of the day. So I jumped into the community tab on our uh, YouTube channel just before the show started. Right now, just about 5,000 of you guys have voted on this. And it is way closer than I thought. I thought it was going to be like 90% Marvel, 10% DC. But right now, I ask the question of the day, in terms of movies and where they each are at at the moment, right now, between DC and Marvel, who's in the better position right now, not who's the better company overall? And right now, almost 5,000 of you guys have voted, and it's way closer than I thought. Right now, 59% of you think Marvel is in the better position right now, but a 41% of you are saying that you think DC is in a better position right now, kind of like I do right now. And Rob, I kind I got to believe... That if we did this poll a year ago, I got a feeling this would be much more slanted. I I have a feeling that poll would be much more slanted a year ago. But right now we are where we are. Question for you guys is what do you think about all that? Jump down into the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Okay, guys.